Building or optimizing your menu is one of the most important things that you'll need to do with Encounter. This video goes through each of the different types of products that you can create and also how to create them. To start with, a normal product is a product that when you tap or click, simply ends up in the receipt panel over here. You can tap on the product in the transaction menu and change things like quantity or add notes to that particular product uh, if you'd like as well, and then apply those changes and they end up on the product here. To create a normal product, you only need a few bits of information. Head into back office, go into your product section here, and then click on add a product, which is this orange button here, which moves a little bit if you've already added some products. You can give your product a name, in this case, coffee. You can add it to a category. You need to have a product within a category for it to appear on the point of sale. And then you give it a price. Once you add that product, it'll then be added to the point of sale. We've got a couple of demo products here. A great example for a, a product that you might add as a normal product is a fruit danish. Simply tap the fruit danish and it's entered into the transaction with its relevant price. The next type of product that we're going to go through is a variant product. Variant products are products which are housed in a single tile, as you see here. And each of these products within this tile are inventory specific products. For example, you might have different sizes of coffee or different sizes of t-shirt. Each of these products can be added to a sale independently, as you see here. Variants are a great way to combine similar products in a single product tile. A great example of a variant product is in our coffee menu here, a flat white. So in this flat white, you can see we have a flat white takeaway regular, flat white takeaway large, flat white dine-in regular, and flat white dine-in large. Each of these items are inventory specific, um, so you can add each of them completely separately. You can also then report on the different dine-in large coffees that you sold, as opposed to your takeaway large coffees. To create a variant product, head into back office, Find a product that you've already created or create a new one. Then you're going to want to go into your product settings here. Go up to the variants tab across the top and select your attributes. Now attributes are things like size or color or maybe dine option. But in this case, we're going to do size as we're creating different variations for our latte product. I'm going to add my size attribute in here. You can also add other attributes, uh, like dine option, as I had in the example, but I won't for this particular example. I'll save my template and then press yes. And then in the next step here, I'm going to, in my variants tab, add a new variant. So the size here is large, and my large is $4. And then I'll add another one. Small, and my small is 350. So now you can see that I've got a number of variant products that are within my variants tab inside my variant product. In the products menu here, you can really easily see your variant products because they have a different icon, as you can see here, and they also have these little indented sub products. These sub products are the products that you'll be selling within your latte variant product um, and you'll also be able to report independently on all of your larges and smalls separately. The next product that we're going to go through are products with options. You can see here in the bottom right hand corner products with options have a little plus. If we click on a product with options we're then presented with the sets of options for that product or our option sets. This first option set has a rule to choose a single option and has a option prefix option. So I can click on here and have on the side option two. So you can see I've got my product here with the options and then the first option that I've selected is option two on the side. The second option that I've got here has no rules, the second option set. So I can select as many of these options as I'd like before hitting save. So here you have on the side option two with option one, option two, option three, etc, etc. Uh, it's nice and easy. A great practical example of those option sets is a pizza, for example. Um, I've got the Hawaiian pizza here, and you can see I have my little plus icon. So if I click on that Hawaiian pizza, I'm presented with a more toppings option. I can then add additional toppings to this particular pizza. And here I have my Hawaiian pizza with chili, uh, extra fontina, and um, fior de latte on the side. So a really easy way to curate uh, complex ordering workflows. Now we're going to look at how to actually set one up. 
If we jump into our back office to our products tab and we jump into the option sets tab here, we're going to be presented with some options. The first thing we need to do is create an option set. So we go into the option sets sub tab. We create an option set and we give this option set a name. The name that I'm going to choose for this option set is source. Uh, whether the person would like source and which source that particular person would uh, would like. Once I've created the source option set, I can then start filling it with my different options. So my first source option is going to be barbecue. It's going to be free. My second source is going to be <coughs> tomato sauce. And again, it's going to be free. And my final source is going to be truffle oil. And it's going to be $2. So you can see here, I've added in these options. I can then go to the rules tab here within my option set and select what my minimum selection is. So my minimum selection in this case is zero because you can definitely have the, uh, the products that I'll be selling with these sources without any source. And the maximum selection is three. So you can have all three sources if you want. Um, I'm also going to show option prefixes on the side, which gives me that little extra tile on my point of sale where I can select no extra side or only next to my options. So if we jump back into our example in the Hawaiian here, we can select this little box, which is my add instruction box, and I can select only artichoke or extra broccoli or no chili. And you can see here those prefixes are added into my sale. And that's how you create an option set. Now the last thing that you need to do to get this option set onto a particular product is go into your products with option sets and then attach this particular option set to a product. So I'll jump in here and press my add option set box here, click source, and then that source option set will trigger every time I sell a fruit danish. So I sell a fruit danish and it'll ask me whether I'd like to add source to that particular fruit danish. Again, the minimum is zero, the maximum is three, so you can have barbecue or barbecue and tomato or tomato and truffle oil or only truffle oil. You can have all of those either on the side or any of those options there as well. So it's a really beautiful way of curating your workflows using these, uh, these option sets. Next is products with variable quantities. This is a simple product feature that allows you to have a variable quantity prompt appear whenever you select a product. So I'll select my product with variable quantities here, and then automatically you see a change quantity box where you can go and add in the exact quantity of whatever you're selling. For example, 4.23 kilograms of um, almonds here, for example. Um, this is a really useful feature um, for prompting staff to sell in variable quantities or to speed up workflows for, uh, for selling certain items that always are sold in variable quantities, like weights of nuts or, uh, or a weight of, uh, of fish or, or meat, for example. So to set up a variable quantity prompt, it's actually uh, quite simple. All you need to do is go into back office, jump into your products list here, your products menu, Find a particular product that you'd like to have prompt for variable quantity. I'm going to use my fruit danish as an example here. Go into the menu. And then I'm going to jump into my settings and down to variable quantity prompt. Automatically prompt for quantity when adding this item to a sale. And change that to yes and save. Now every time I sell a fruit Danish, it'll automatically prompt me for quantity. This particular variable quantity prompt button is set up with $1 per one unit. We've sold 2.3, so it's $2.30 that is added to our sale. And that's how to set up products with variable quantities. The next product that we'll be showing you is modifier products. Modifier products cannot be added to a sale on their own. Instead, they are added as a modification to another product but they sit within the context of a category. So think of them like uh, an option that you might assign to an option set, but instead of having to go into a product to get to your options, they're sitting within the category. So if I add a normal product, I can tap on my product modifier or my modifier product, and it'll automatically get added to that product. You can see there that the modifier product is added, added automatically to the previous product that was sold. So I can 
add in here my variant product two, and then a modifier or two to that particular product. Uh, this is a really great way of doing things like a coffee menu. So we'll use that as our example today. If you're selling a latte, you can then have all of your modifications. I know personally, my favorite latte is a three quarter skim latte. So I've got my skim modifier there. Um, and sometimes I have some sugars in it, whether it's one sugar, two sugars, three sugars. So you can see here that those modifications are added to that particular product. They're also printed in a really beautiful way so that the barista or that the kitchen can understand what's being modified by the products that you're selling. I do have to note at this point that modifier products are independent in terms of inventory for the products that they are attached to. So you could see in your reporting, for example, how many lattes you sold and how many skim milk modifiers you added to products, but not how many skim lattes you sold. So that's a very important distinction to make with modifier products against something like variants, for example, where in your variant product, all of your items are inventory specific. So my flat white takeaway large here is a single inventory unit, so you can, assign, you can report on that single inventory unit as a single unit. Setting up a modified product is very, very easy. Simply jump into your products, find the product that you'd like to change into a modified product or add a new modified product. Jump into the settings of your product. Scroll down on the settings and then change the make this product a modifier toggle to yes, and then save. This product is now a modifier and will behave on the point of sale like our modifier does here. And the next product that we're gonna be talking about is products with images. There's a couple of things to note with products of Im with images. First and foremost, you see that the text moves from the top left-hand corner to across the bottom over a translucent bar. Uh, this is so that the image can shine through and the image can be first and foremost the stimulus that you use when you're selecting your products from your menu. When you add a product with an image to a transaction, it acts exactly like any other product. And you can add product images to normal products, variant products, products with options, the options within those products, um, products with variable quantity prompts, and modifier products. So you can add these particular images to all of your different types of products. To add a product image to a product, simply head to back office, jump into your products menu here, select a product you'd like to add an image to, click or tap on this upload a photo, and then either choose your file or drag your file into this box and then click upload. You'll then have the option to drag a square around your product for the part of that image that you'd like to feature for your product and then you can press save. You'll see that the product image will appear here and then you have to press save to save that image into the product. Now in your product list, that product image will appear on the left hand side next to that, uh, that particular product line and on the point of sale, it will also appear in your product. Throughout this tutorial, you might have also noticed that we've got a number of different colored squares around our products. To change the colors around your products or to reorder where your products sit within your categories or where your categories sit within your list, simply head to Menu, Preferences, Arrange Items, and then drag your items around to rearrange the order, drag your categories around to rearrange their order, click on a product to change the color, and then save to save your layout. If you want to reorder products in different categories, you'll need to choose the category first, then go back into preferences and arrange items. Change the order of that category, save, and then choose the di different category. Then back to preferences, arrange items, change your order, and save.